The iMac Pro was officially released just a little over a month ago with a starting price tag of $5,000. And if you decided that you wanted to customize your iMac Pro, you can spend anywhere from seven to $14,000. Now, I just couldn't justify any of that, including the $5,000 base model, or shall I say I just didn't have an additional $5,000 to buy one. Well, Micro Center recently had a $1,000 off the base model deal just last week, so that puts the base model starting at $3,999. And due to some fortunate circumstances and that Micro Center deal, I was able to actually pull the trigger and pick up the iMac Pro. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at my iMac Pro, the 5K iMac that I bought in late 2015, and the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, and compare them and see just how well they do up against each other in terms of overall performance and a speed test. So before we do anything, it is kind of important to note some of the key specs of each computer. Starting off with the iMac Pro, not much has changed visually from my other iMac, aside from a few Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports and that flashy space gray finish. But you do have the same 5K display and the overall same design. The inside is where the magic happens, and the base model iMac Pro that we have here has a 3.2 gigahertz Intel Xeon W processor, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, one terabyte SSD, and an AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 graphics card. Now, if we wanna compare that to my 2015 5K iMac, you have a 3.2 gigahertz Intel 6th gen quad core i5 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, but I did upgrade to 24 gigs, a one terabyte fusion drive, and an AMD Radeon R9 M390 graphics card. As you can see, there is quite a spec difference between the two. Finally, in a completely different league, is my 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Now the reason why I'm including this guy is because it's actually my main workstation and my main computer overall, up until a few days ago when I purchased the iMac Pro. Specs for the MacBook Pro include a 2.6 GHz quad-core 6th gen Intel processor, 16 GB of RAM, a 256 GB SSD, as well as a Radeon Pro 450 graphics card. With that said, this guy has been dragging a lot lately when editing videos, something that I do every single day, and is the main reason why I decided to upgrade. So I wanted to include this guy in the performance test. Speaking of testing, let's jump right into a disk speed test using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test app. And it is important to note that the iMac Pro should be heavily favored here in pretty much all of my tests because it is the better machine in terms of specifications. But exactly how much faster is this machine compared to the other two? Starting off with the MacBook Pro, we get a consistent write speed of 943 megabits per second and a read speed of 1159, which, spoiler alert, is the only time that we see the read speeds outclock the write. With the 5K iMac, we were able to consistently get 212 megabits per second in write and 597 megabits per second in read speeds. Finally, the iMac Pro came in at a whopping 3006 megabits per second in write and 2471 megabits per second in read speeds, which is basically pushing those digital meters to the maximum. So now that we know exactly how fast our drive should perform, it's time to do a test in a real world use case. And so for me, that's using Final Cut Pro and exporting videos. So with each machine, I exported the same project, which is a roughly six and a half minute 4K video with a moderate amount of plugins and effects. And I wanted to see exactly how fast each of these machines will export the video. Please keep in mind that this test is in no way scientific, but it does give me a better understanding of what I am dealing with when it comes to exporting a video across all of these machines. And if you decide to try this for yourself, your speeds might be a little different compared to mine. The MacBook Pro came in at a whopping nine minutes and 34 seconds, which is mind blowing in the fact that an older 5K iMac would export the same footage in nearly one third the time coming in at three minutes and 50 seconds. Now, another interesting assessment from this test is that the iMac Pro would actually export the same video roughly 10 to 15 seconds slower than the 5k iMac. Now what's not surprising at all is that the actual editing experience and overall workflow with the iMac Pro is way faster than either of these machines. Sure, the 5K iMac might have edged out the iMac Pro in export time, but editing always consists of drop frames, lag, and random crashes. This can be said even more with the MacBook Pro. In fact, with the iMac Pro, I can have Slack, Notes, and Google Chrome open at the same time while editing at full resolution and the fans do not even kick on. 
So I wanted to stress that point because the other two machines weren't anywhere near the iMac Pro in terms of overall workflow and performance levels. As I mentioned before, the iMac Pro should have beaten the other two machines in just about every category, and that's pretty much what happened. But it was interesting to see that the 5K iMac was able to edge the iMac Pro in export time by about 10 seconds. With that said, I want to know what you guys think of the baseline iMac Pro in the comments section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.